First Thessalonians 4, verse number 13, when you have that, say amen. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which are asleep in Jesus will God bring with Him. For this we shall say unto the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I'm talking about the rapture of the church and, and, and the fact that one of these days Jesus said that He was going, and if He went, He was coming again, that where He was, He would receive us to Himself. And certainly that's, uh, that includes the believer, as Jesus was talking about. Those that are in Christ, one day have the assurance to know that, that the Lord is going to come back and He's going to call us out of this world and out of the things that we face. And I don't know about you, but at times I, I feel it seemed like it would be nice to go right now. Hey Amen. You ever been there? You just, just, just forget this, this rat race. And, you know, I, I mean, you know, everything in the world sometimes happens in your life and difficulties arise and, and troubles and, and, and things that you don't... You ever, anybody ever been through something like that? So, you know, just the hard times and difficulties, sickness and despair. And, and it, it just would be so great for the Lord just to come on back. But I'm also remindful of the fact that not everybody has the assurance that you and I have this morning. If you're in this room this morning and you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, if you've asked Him to come into your heart, if you've asked Him to be your Lord and Savior, you have an assurance that when you die or when He comes back, you're on your way to heaven. You're, you've got lock, stock, and barrel. You're on your way. But not everybody knows the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So while I'd like to see the Lord just come on and get us out of this mess and, and, and take us on home, I'm awful, also remindful that there's others that need to make the decision to make Jesus the Savior of their life. And we've been talking about the rapture, and the rapture is the sudden removal of the church, more specifically the believers in Christ. Folks, because there's going to be a lot of church folk who's not going to go when this thing happens. There's going to be a lot of people who sing in the choir, who take up the offering, who work in teaching Sunday school and Bible studies. There's going to be a lot of men who stand behind this pulpit that when the rapture takes place, they're going to be left behind. Because there's a difference between being in the church and belonging to Christ. You see, you can be in the church for years and years and years and never belong to Him the only way to get to heaven is through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Not through serving, not through working. It's through knowing Him and asking Him to come into your heart. You say, well, I'm a good moral person. I give my money. I go to church. I study. But the question is, have you asked Jesus to come into your heart, to be your Savior? Have you accepted Him by faith and made Him the Lord of your life? So there'll be a lot of people who will be left behind who have been in the church for years but never ask Him into their life. So it's the sudden removal of the church, more specifically the believers of the cry of Christ from the earth to be with the Lord. We talked about the first Sunday, we talked about uh, uh, where we got the word rapture. It's not found in the Bible, but it's taken from that word that we just read, to be caught up. And we talked about when it will happen. Nobody knows, but Jesus Himself promised it. Matthew twenty four thirty two. Now learn a parable of the fig tree when the branch is yet tender and put forth leaves. You know that summer is near. So likewise, when you see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. What's it, know what is near. Talking about His return. When you see all these things that is listed up above there, when you see these things happening, know it's at the, even at the doors. Verse number 34. Verily, verily, I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things shall be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Now listen to what he says. But of that day and hour, no man, not the angels of heaven know, but my Father only. So when will it happen? The Bible says that nobody knows the day that it will happen. It is probably a good thing. If we knew the day and the hour that it would happen, most of us are, are procrastinators. We would put off to the very end everything that we needed to do to the last minute. 
How many of y'all do that already? I mean, you, you've got a deadline, you've got a date, uh, you know something's coming, and you'll put it off to the very last minute to get it done. I know some of you all do that. I pass some, especially some of you ladies. We will pass you on the highways on the way to work. I mean, you've waited to the very last minute, you've run out of time, and now you're going up the highway doing 55 mile an hour uh, with your, your face in the rear view mirror trying to put makeup and all that on. Yeah, I know some of y'all look at me like you don't do it. I, I'll ask for an altar call here in a minute. But we do. We're that type of people. We put off everything to the very last moment, waiting to the very last. And Jesus said, no man knows the day or the hour that the Lord Himself is going to come back. More than that, folks, you don't know the day or the hour that God's going to call you out of here through death. But you know it's coming. So the question is, if you know it's coming, if you know it's going to happen, why not be ready? When it's already provided for, when it's already taken care of, why not be ready? You know it's going to happen. You know you're going to die someday. And you know, according to the Word of God, that for, the, for everybody after this life is a life after that. Why not be ready? I mean, after all, you buy insurance all, the time, all day long, don't you? You buy insurance for your car. You buy insurance for your home. Just assuming that something could happen. And God has given us an opportunity to buy insurance. Fireproof insurance. To keep us out of a place called hell. And it's going to happen someday. And Jesus said, but of that hour, nobody knows. So if we don't know, if it's a sudden removal, as the Bible describes, it's going to be an instantaneous sudden removal from the earth of the church. If it's going to happen quickly, then doesn't it make sense, folks, that we need to be ready? And maybe God's dealing with us today to make a decision, to rededicate our life, to be baptized, to join the church, whatever it might be. Doesn't it make sense that if God is dealing with your heart this morning to do something, to do it while there's still time? lest you wait till it's too late. Because of that hour and that day, the Bible says no man knows, not even the angels in heaven. So when will it take place? Well, there's three views on when the, when the rapture of the church will take place. There's a pre-tribulation, a, post-tri- or a mid-tribulation, and a post-tribulation theory. Now, what in the world does all that mean? It means, according to the Bible, that after the, uh, after, when the rapture takes place, the world will be cast into what is called the tribulation, a seven-year period of great suffering like the world has never seen. You think what happened in Southeast Asia uh, just a month or so ago was bad? What the world is about to witness through the tribulational period, has, uh, th- what happened the other day, does not even compare with what the world will face in that period. But some people believe believe that, ha- that the rapture will take place before and then the world will be cast into tribulation. Some folks believe that, that the earth, that the church will go through part of the tribulation and then the Lord will take the church out before the great tribulation. There's some that believe that we'll go through all the tribulation and then the Lord will take us out. Well, first of all, just let me give you my opinion. I believe that we'll leave pre-tribulation. I believe the church will be taken out before the tribulation period. Let's look at Revelations. Chapter 3, verse number 10. Revelations chapter 3, verse number 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them which dwell upon the earth. I believe that's a specific sign that tells us that because thou hast kept our, the patience, we waited, uh, that we'll be taken out before the world is cast into the tribulation. Beyond that, the church is not mentioned after Revelations chapter 4. There's no mention of the church taking place. The Bible says in Matthew that no man knows the day or the hour that it takes place. Now let's think about this for just a minute. If the rapture took place in the mid or at the end of the tribulation, then how can we trust Matthew 24, 36, when the Bible says no man knows the day or the hour. We can know basically when we're going to be taken out if we were in the middle of this thing. The middle would be three and a half years. The end would be the end of seven. The Bible is very specific on everything that will happen during the time of the tribulation. But the point is that no man knows the day or the hour. I believe that we'll go out before the, uh, before the tribulation starts. But no man knows the day or the hour. You don't know the day that you'll draw your last breath. But folks, you need to be prepared because tomorrow's not guaranteed. Sickness can strike just like that. Death can happen just like that. You might be healthy and fine right at the moment. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll live through the end of this day. 
one of our things that we like to do real well on Friday nights is watch uh, uh, our show is that we've, we've been watching this, Dr. G. Anybody ever watch Dr. G on, the, I think it's the Learning Channel? She's an Orange County coroner out of Orange County, Florida. She, she does autopsies. She's a head medical examiner. She does autopsies. And, and, and when people die, you know, unexpectedly, they send them to her and she cuts them open and takes out all their body parts and, and checks everything and weigh, all this stuff. I love it. I like it. <laughs> But some of these people that die were healthy. And in a split second, they dropped dead. Just Friday night was a man on there. There's a something, I don't remember what it was called now, but it's the stem that runs from your brain down to your spinal cord in the back of your neck. And because of years of unattended to high blood pressure, that in there ruptured, and he died just like that, 51 years old, 52, something, 54, I don't remember what it was. They didn't even know it was coming, but he died. So of that hour, folks, that you and I leave here, nobody knows. But we can know where we're going when we leave here. And see, the devil's lie is to tell you that you're not saved. You ever been through that, you know, you, you, you sin in life and you mess up in life and you know you're a Christian, but yet you just somewhere down the inside you, it's like the devil's laughing at you. <laughs> Look at you, you're not saved. You ever been through that? And the devil's lie is to tell you you don't belong to him. Let me make this clear this morning. If you've asked Jesus into your heart, if you've prayed the sinner's prayer, if you've confessed Jesus as Lord and asked Him to come into your heart and forgive you your sins and be your Savior, folks, you are secure and you have a place in heaven waiting for you. And the devil will try to tell you, you don't belong to Him. You're not His. Look how you're acting. Now listen, we all have issues that we need to straighten up. We all have issues that we need to fix and we all have issues we need to get better at. But the bottom line is that when you ask Jesus to come into your life, it's signed, sealed, and delivered. You belong to Him. When you die, you go to heaven. But without Him, without making that decision, there's no guarantee for you. Well, I want to talk about one other thing this morning, and then we'll finish up next week with with the last part about the rapture. Uh, This event will be unexpected. And you say, how in the world is this event going to be unexpected? You're talking about it this morning. Yes, you and I know that it's going to happen, but folks, most of the world is living in ignorance today. Most of the world is living their life just as if tomorrow is guaranteed. How many of you know, how many of you, maybe even this morning, you got up this morning and said, well, you know, I'm going to church, but tomorrow I've got to do this at work and that at work, and I've got this whole week ahead of me, and, and you're just expecting that that's what's going to happen. And you might not even live to see tomorrow. Well, this event's going to be unexpected. Most of the world, you know, we, we hear the devil's lie is that the preachers have always preached about it. How many's, how many's ever heard it? Well, pre, you've heard it years ago, preachers preaching about the end of time. And the devil, if he can get you to think, well, you know, but Brother Kevin, they've been talking about this for years. And it ain't happened? Yes, they've been talking about this for years. And it's not happened. But every day we draw one day closer to this event. Matthew chapter 24, verse number 43. When you have a say amen. But know this, this is Jesus speaking, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. Now, 44, therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man's coming. The Bible says in an hour that you say, ah, no, this ain't, no, they've been preaching that for years, it ain't going to happen. Oh, they've been, there's still more yet to be done. And this, Jesus said, in the hour that you don't think it's going to happen, guess what? It's coming. In the hour that you thought that you weren't going to die, guess what happens? You leave here. My grandmother was 61 years old, working, seemed to be in decent shape, other than just maybe some normal things that you get as you get older. But 61 years old, was sitting in the hospital. She was a nurse at the Harrison County Hospital, worked in the nursery, rocked little babies. And she was sitting at the break table one, one night, and, and uh, sitting, while she was sitting there, she, she told him, she said, I've you know, got a little bit of a headache here. I'm not sure what's going on, just a little bit of a headache. And within a second, she fell out in the floor, and it died from an aneurysm. You see, you're in this room this morning. You might be in the best health in the world. You might think you've got it all together. That doesn't mean that, folks, that, that this is not your last hour that you're living. It very well could be. You say, well, all around me, there's people that are much older than I. Listen, the only reason why they're older than you is by the grace of God. The only reason why you are here this morning, whether you're 80 or 70 or 60, whatever age you the only reason why you're here is God's chosen, chosen not to take you home just yet but in an hour that you think not. And that's the way it's going to be in the coming of the Son of Man. In an hour that you think, well, not today. I I believe that this is not quite yet the time. And Jesus said in an hour that you think not, He's coming back. This is going to be an unexpected event that's going to literally shake the foundations of the world. Millions of believers in Jesus Christ in an instant are going to be disappeared and gone. 
And the only thing that they'll know that we have in common is this right here. You see, because the world's deceived, folks. And the devil is a great deceiver. You've got tomorrow. You've got tomorrow to get saved. You've got tomorrow to join the church. When God's dealing with you today, ah, not today, you've got tomorrow. You've got tomorrow to say I'm sorry to somebody that you need to say you're sorry to. Well, it's not my fault. It doesn't matter if it's your fault. God's telling you to get it right and get it right because tomorrow might not come. And if it doesn't come, you'll stand before God and give an account for why you didn't do what He asked you to do. The devil is a great deceiver. Do it tomorrow. Do it tomorrow. Isn't it interesting? The devil, he deceives you in all types of ways. You want to lose weight? What's the devil say? <laughs> do it tomorrow. You want to get on a budget and get out of debt? What's the devil say? Ah, do it tomorrow. And in an hour, nobody thinks eastern skies are going to split wide open and the Lord is going to call His church away. And the reality is, folks, is that most in the church have quit looking for this event to happen. We're so wrapped up and so so absorbed in what's going on in our lives. And listen, I understand when you're dealing with difficulties and you're dealing with problems, it's easy to get wrapped up into that. But you need to know, church, that there is an hour that you're going to be taken out of all this mess and you're not going to have to deal with it any longer. Look up. Rejoice. If you know Christ, you've got hope. It's not always going to be this way. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. These trials and troubles that we face are only going to last for a little while. And then we're leaving here. But it might not be when you think. We plan for retirement. We plan for all types of things, don't we? Retirement. We get our retirement accounts set, life insurance set, wills done, and all these things. And we sometimes forget the most important piece of preparation that we can make is having Jesus in our lives. A friend of mine I maybe have told you about was a preacher, 30, 32, 33 years old. He was preaching in a large church in Texas. Called, he came down at the end of the end of his sermon, stood down, sort of like what I do on Sunday morning. And he told his congregation, he said, if God's dealing with you to get something right, you need to do it this morning because this next breath you take could be your last. He called on a deacon like I normally do to dismiss. And as he walked down the aisle about middle ways, he fell over. His heart, rather than beat, went into what's known defibrillation. And it just sat there and just done this. And his body shut down. And for all intents and purposes, that morning, he was dead. Now, they revived him, and he's alive today in preaching. But he said, just like that, that was it. The interesting part of the story, he said, for years, I thought I was a Christian. I taught Sunday school and youth group, even pastor to church. He said, but I realized after that that I had never made peace with God. The end of the story goes that a few weeks after, he got better. He came back, and his associate pastor was preaching. He gave the invitation. He came down to the aisle, and uh, they thought maybe he was just coming to pray, but he told the associate pastor... I want Jesus to be the Savior of my life. And said so the associate pastor's jaw just about hit the floor. He said, what? He said, that's right. I've played church. Now I want to make sure I got it right. God, give me one more opportunity. You see, folks, maybe God has given you one more opportunity today to get right maybe whatever it is that you need to get right in your life. For you as a believer, listen to me, believer. For you as a believer, you're going to stand before God and give an account for what you've done in this life. For the thing, you're not going to stand before God and give an account whether or not you're saved or not you're saved. If you're a believer and you've asked Jesus in, but you will give an account for what you've done. For all the things that God's put on your heart to do, maybe you didn't do them, or maybe you did. Based on that, you'll get rewards. What's God been dealing with you on? Well, maybe you're not doing what you need to be doing. Maybe you're not, you're not in Bible study like you need to be, or you're not regular in church. Or, or maybe, maybe God's been dealing with you to do a service, or to drive the van, or, or, or to just, you know, whatever. And if you're not doing that, folks, you'll stand before God and give an account. And God's going to say, why didn't you do it? I give you the opportunity, and I was knocking. And all you had to do was surrender. For you that maybe are in this room this morning, and you don't know Christ, it's almost like walking on the side of a cliff with no safety gear. You say, well, that sounds awful rough, preacher. God's supposed to love people, and yet He let them go to hell? He'll send them to hell? No, God doesn't send anybody to hell. Because you know what will happen? If you're here this morning and you've not asked Jesus in your heart, on the day you stand before Him, if you die in that condition, and you're going to say, God, well, why are you let me go? He's going to say, well, what about Sunday morning at 12 o'clock when that preacher said, all you had to do is ask Jesus to come into your life, and you'd have eternal life. It's that close, folks. The one thing about it, the rapture is going to take place and it's going to be an unexpected event. And then literally millions of church folks are going to be gone. And then the world's going to be cast into a tribulation like the world's never seen. But beyond that, folks, you need to understand that your life could come to a screaming halt this day. And it's best to be prepared because it'll be unexpected. And the question is this morning, are you ready to stand face to face before God?
Believer, are you ready to stand face to face before God? Are you doing what He's asking you to do? If you're in this room this morning and you don't know Him today, are you ready to stand face to face before God and hear Him say, depart from me because I don't know you? You don't have to. 